Good morning. Today I'm going to be uh, looking at scripture out of 2 Kings chapter 25. The title of the lesson today is The People of Judah Are Exiled. But before we dig into that scripture a little bit, I'd like to give you a quote for the morning. Also highly contagious is kindness, patience, love, enthusiasm, and a positive attitude. Don't wait to catch it from others. Be the carrier. I was reminded of a picture Bob took of an absolutely giant, perfect spider web. And it glistened in the morning sun that morning, the morning after Katrina, uh, August 5th, 2005. That spider web served to remind me that this morning, and even that morning, God is at work. I often call up my dear sister to bounce my ideas and solicit her input as I'm preparing my Sunday school lessons. She reminded me of the quote from Frederick Buchner regarding the spider web. He quotes as follows, Life is like an enormous spider web so that if you touch it anywhere, you set the whole thing a-trembling. As we move around this world and as we act with kindness or perhaps indifference or hostility toward the people we meet, we, we too are setting that great spider web a-trembling. Where the trembling stops or in what far place that time, at that time, my touch is felt. Our lives are linked together. No person is an island. The spider web was used for a booklet we prepared honoring my mom. It showed all the lives that she had impacted, and the image of the spider web was visible on each page. Speaking of my sister, I want to do a little commercial. If you want to laugh this morning, Go to her website, Wounded of the Wisdom, and look at her message. I am over 60 years old and I'm grounded. She is so faithful as she continues her ministry of helping people care for one another. Before I began working on this lesson, on Monday, March 30th, I read my daily devotion from Jesus Calling. This is the morning that uh, I heard that we again are under another 30 days stay at home. And this is Jesus talking to you and I think to me of certainly. I am taking care of you. That was all in caps, by the way. Trust me at all times. Trust me in all circumstances. Trust me with all your heart. When you are weary, and everything seems to be going wrong, you can still utter these four words. I trust you, Jesus. By doing so, you release matters into my control, and you fall back into the security of my everlasting arms. Bet you're thinking, is she ever going to get to the scripture lesson? Okay, I'm going to admit it. I'm procrastinating. Do we need the doom and gloom contained in, today, in today's scripture lesson. I'll let you be the judge. I'm not going to read the entire scripture uh, today, but will give you glimpses as to what has happened to get a full dose in very vivid detail. Read 2 Kings 25, 8 through 21. In this scripture, Judah has hit, has hit absolutely rock bottom, emotionally, physically, and every way we can imagine. The stated purpose of 2 Kings in my Bible says, to demonstrate the fate that awaits all who refuse to make God their true leader. Today's scripture is setting uh, is, this once united kingdom of Israel has been divided into two, into two kingdoms. 
for over a century now. And the northern kingdom has already fallen. Some 30, some 30 prophets have proclaimed God's message to the people and their leaders. And there's been many, many promises of repentance and returning to the Lord. In today's scripture, we are looking over the narrator's shoulder at the ruins of Jerusalem. There is a great sense of grief as we see the chosen people of God who were once brought out of Egypt into the promised land. Bob, the other night, I think it was Saturday night, watched the Ten Commandments. What a jubilee of celebration as they left their bondage in Egypt. Now there's no new song or laminate from Judas King or sackcloth or ashes, no prophetic pronouncement, and not even a call for Judah to have hope. In today's scripture lesson, we are looking at the ending of a great city at the heart of a kingdom that God so loved. There was not going to be any, just an occupation. It was the intention of that Babylonian army to wipe Jerusalem from the face of the earth. They were ordered to burn down every, every important building, every great house, leaving only, only a few poor laborers to remain in that city. King Epicanezer II ordered, make sure you take the following people, the chief priest, the associate priest, three wardens, the chief recruiting officer for the army, and 60 men of standing. And these individuals were to be marched off immediately. And you know what happened? They were cold, killed in cold blood, leaving Judah without any ruler. King Zedekiah became a prisoner of war. He watched his sons be slaughtered before his own eyes. Then those same eyes were gouged out. This time the Lord's temple was completely destroyed with the invaders carrying away all the national treasures. Any thread of hope belonging to God's people went with them into exile. And even there it was not under their control. The whole sad saga of Judah's last years are summed up in one sentence, our key verse in today's scripture. The king of Babylon struck them down, so Judah was exiled from its land. That's 2 Kings 25, 21. The message said it this way. Judah went into exile, orphaned from her land. The escape from Egypt became the exile into Babylon. Their Judean history, their monarchy, and their way of life has collapsed. Now, that's a lot of doom and gloom, isn't it? But let us ask ourselves, what does it have for us right here, right now, in 2020? What's it saying to you and to me? As most of us, we have hit the pause button in our busy, busy lives. It might be a good time to stop and take notice and take stock. It's what C.S. Lewis wrote. I like this uh, in, uh, during World War II. Don't just dream about what life will be like when this is over. Savor the time you have now to be still. Rethink and do things you have put off, especially if what you have put off is God. Discover yourself during this time and consider it a gift from God. I also saw this on Facebook. Not sure who the author is. But you know, I think God uses different methods, different people to to bring us a message, to get our attention. This is a conversation between Satan and Jesus. You know, it might have been taken just prior to the current epidemic, uh, pandemic. 
This is Satan. I will cause anxiety, fear, and panic. I will shut down businesses, schools, places of worship, and sporting events. I will cause economic turmoil. This is Jesus in answer to Satan. I will bring together neighbors, restore the family unit. I will bring dinner back to the kitchen table. I will help people slow down their lives and appreciate what really matters. I will teach my children to rely on me and not the world. I will teach my children to trust me and not their money and material resources. Yes, today's scripture lesson certainly vividly shows what happens to the Israelites. And it was a very, very low time. As we know, many would not live to go back to their beloved Jerusalem. Yes, nations, and we individually, have experienced low times in our lives. Those were devastating times when we were in danger of dropping into despair. But you know, most, a lot of those times have caused us to look up, knowing from whence our help would come. In thinking about this, I remember our house fire back in 2007 and my feeling of complete despair. I'll never, never forget how my church family, friends, and family helped turn my despair into so many blessings. God was using people to spread blessings. To name a few, we were provided housing until we could make other arrangements. When I couldn't stand to eat another meal in a restaurant, a home-cooked meal was provided, money to meet immediate expenses, a housewarming where the nitwits placed a prayer shawl around us, and so many, many more acts of kindness. Even the children got into the action. Karen Cooley had children prepare me a booklet containing happy pictures the children had drawn. I ended up with a completely remodeled house, new furniture, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera and the most important thing for me, a deeper walk with our Lord. During the months we lived in a motel, many, many times I said, Lord, I can't handle this, but I know you have it. You know, today, even today, the church is, uh, is, is a building working outside. Uh, just this morning, I received a text messaging asking how we were doing and asking if we needed anything and, and an offer to purchase and put it on our front porch. Now, that's the church working outside the building. Do you think today's scripture lesson has a message for us today? Hope you're nodding your head. True hope can be found only in the God who stays with us through and even beyond the ends of our circumstances. Yes, Israel's hope of gaining back its land was gone. Even the army officers, now guerrilla rebels, had fled. Judah's early kingdom was absolutely demolished. But through prophets like Ezekiel and David, who were also captives, God was able to keep the spiritual kingdom alive in the hearts of many who were living in exile. You know, today I observe many, many people are looking up, calling on the Lord, realizing we must put ourselves in the hands of the Lord, who will still the waters. Suggestion. This is what I've tried each morning when I get up. I look out into my yard and observe how wonderfully God is spreading spring. It's bursting into great beauty. And I say, this is the Lord day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be it, glad in it. Amen and amen. You know, when you take the authority and the power of Jesus Christ, an incredible peace comes over you and you're truly able to say, it is well with my soul. Please stand and sing with us.